It's like a really thin piece of silicone. Wow, that is stretchy. It actually feels like the real thing. No way. Series three of the Miniverse Make It Mini Foods is finally out and we have our hands on quite a few. For those of you who don't know Miniverse Make It Mini Foods mystery boxes, they are a craft kit of miniature foods. Inside each mystery box, we get tiny ingredients that look like grocery store items in little baggies. They are really cute. And based on these tiny ingredients, we can turn them into recipes and completed looking foods. The main ingredient in these is UV resin, which is a liquid when hardened turns into a glassy type plastic. And in previous videos, I've done so many projects with UV resin, whether they're environments, miniature swimming pools, and so on and so forth. I will link a few down below. But I have to say that I am really excited for Series 3, and this one is the Diner Series 3. And even the front of the cover looks like we are doing a hamburger. I'm not quite sure what else is in this series because I'm avoiding spoilers, but many of you grains tag me everywhere about these. And even when looking at the box, it tells us there are 12 different recipes to collect, and I really do hope that we get the burger and maybe even the dinosaur taco. That's You can see it on the box. We have a jello, a dinosaur taco. It looks like we're getting ice cream tayakis maybe and past the salad I don't know I'm just excited because this looks really fun let me know in the comments section below if you like hamburgers whether they're vegetarian or not what are your favorite toppings in there I'm very basic ketchup mustard pickles tomatoes sometimes mayo but no onions onions no there's a goodbye onion no I don't like raw onions and if I'm feeling extra cheeky I'll have blue cheese I know some of y'all hate blue cheese but I love blue cheese but let me know in the comments what are your favorites. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe and click on all notifications while you're there, which will turn you into a grain of salt in the Salt Shaker family. And please don't forget to like the video. It really does help us in the YouTube universe. And the goal for today's video is to try and get at least three to four different projects in these mystery boxes. All right, with that said, despite the fact that we have all of these, it's possible that at some point we might get doubles. That's why I always buy extra, because sometimes my luck is just not the greatest. So we're gonna move all of these to the side. I do have quite short arms, so I can't reach that one. Let's just get the knife's help. Come here, come, come here, come here. There you go, I got you. By the way, if you grains love simulation games, I'd like to talk about today's sponsor, Life Makeover. Life Makeover is a wonderfully limitless dress up and social media simulation game where you can create your own avatar, customize dress up and makeup, and build your own dream house. But that is not all. This game also offers a storyline with some mystery. So why not check out my link down below and download Life Makeover today to get started on your absolutely adorable journey. And right now with the new Life Makeover version, we have Ethereal Melody, which runs at a limited time from December 6th to December 26th. With this update, we also have six star clothing, Clockwork Heart. And these clothing have a dreamy and fairy-like vibe to them. And the fun thing about the clock design is that it does synchronize with your phone's clock to try and link virtual world with reality. And with Life Makeover, you can experience so many fun things in game, like customizing your appearance, and you can really customize it the way that you want, pinching, zooming in the face, zooming out, different sizes for different parts. Yes, even DIYing your own clothes. And you can invite your friends or different parts of your community to come and join you in game as well. And of course, customizing your own home is absolutely fun. Whether you're looking for luxury, a penthouse, modern home, home, a farmhouse, and everything in between. And as I mentioned, there is an element of mystery in the game. So not only are you growing as a character, but you're also discovering something in order to solve a crime. So again, what are you waiting for? Check my link down below as well as the pinned comment and check out Life Makeover today so you can meet other players, invite your besties, and even have home parties on the weekend in your virtual life. Thank you Life Makeover for sponsoring a portion of today's video. And let's see how good series three actually is. Ooh. And the outside wrapper is actually pretty cute. I can see that there's sushi. I see the dinosaur taco, the ice cream. I see some potential kebabs. I think these are kebabs. The taiyaki, I guess, I guess we'll see. We'll look at the actual instruction sheet. You know what? At least they're opening better than usual. Let's hear that pop. Very low. We have one, two, more stuff. Three, four, five, six, 
seven surprises. My goodness, there's quite a few. We do have our stand where we can actually put our food and make our environment. We also have the instruction sheet and QR code if you want to check it out, but I am a professional. I do not need anyone to tell me what to do, especially because I like to think outside the box sometimes and do frozen moment type projects. If you're not sure what frozen moments are, here's an example of the most recent frozen moments I did. So even though the projects don't tell us to make them like this, I like to think outside the box. So if we do have that opportunity today, we'll do that. So here is the guide that should show us every single project we should be able to get in series three. And we're starting off up here with different kinds of cupcakes. We have crepes. We have taiyaki ice cream. Okay, so that's, I figured that's what it is. For those of you who don't know taiyaki, it is a Japanese dessert typically stuffed with either custard or red beans, as you can see here on the screen. We also have a Caesar salad that is adorable. Some vegetable skewers. We have sushi, cute. They're really going in on these savory things. We have chocolate roll cake, checkered mint. We have blue jelly, a pesto salad, the dinosaur crunchy tacos, and we have the cheeseburger. I think we got the cheeseburger. I think we're starting off strong with the cheeseburger because I see this little mat and this is this is what we got, grains. I think we're starting off with the burger, so let's, let's see what we get. All right, so let's start off with the first surprise. First one, we have, what are you? Hot sauce, maybe it's not the burger. Let's see if it has any non-nutritional fats. Let's get a little closer, oh my goodness. No, usually they have non-nutritional facts a little bit of everywhere, but this one all we could see is the sun looking pretty hot, which is kind of cute. And we do have a nozzle for it, so we'll see where that goes. This one's pretty flat, so I don't know what we're expecting here. What does it say? Happy Sun Farms, made fresh, cute. Love the illustration of the tomato being pushed by the sun. You are. What is that? Shredded lettuce. Maybe we're going to be making a salad. That's cute. Oh my goodness. We're gonna open all these later and feel the texture. This is another flat item. What are you? What are you? Shredded cheese. I have a feeling this is going to be some kind of salad. Maybe a taco. Ooh, maybe this is the taco. Okay. Oh my, whoa. I accidentally tore this and look, we do have, oh my, that's the dinosaur. Hello, dino. So we are doing the taco. Super cute. This is like one of the two that I really wanted in this set and we are starting with it. So I'm really happy. So I wonder what this is. This is pretty chonky. What are you? Taco beef in a can? I'm guessing this is also going to be a chonky type resin. Let's see what it says here. This is a really tiny writing. So it says, Spoonfuls of fun, vitamin yum, and total ray. So I'm guessing maybe it's not resin. You know what? Let's open this up and see. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that is not resin. I don't know what this is. It's kind of like chunky pieces of rocks and it's not sticky. So there's no resin in them. So we're gonna be using this as a meat base, interestingly. And this one is, what are you? Okay, we have the tiny taco shells. Let's take a look at them. What do you look like? Do we have one or two shells? We have two little taco shells. Love the detail on these, very, very cute. And the box itself is pretty adorable with the illustration of the taco shells looking absolutely adorably happy. And we also have non-nutrition facts here. Let's zoom in and take a look. It says, let's talk about it. Yumminess, vitamin D and total delight. Okay, I can get on board with that. And then usually over here, it's going to be whatever utensil we may or may not need to complete this project. And in this case, it is just the tongs. So you don't have to touch the resin stuff. And let's find our little dinosaur crunchy tacos over here and take out the instructions. Ta-da. And according to the instructions, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to put our dinosaur taco shell and then the meat, hot sauce, and the toppings should all go on top and then harden it. So this is a pretty simple project. All right, so let's go ahead and bring in our tiny dino, perfection. Actually, you know what? I kind of want to feel what the shredded cheese is like. And right, let's open you up. And you are, are you flexible though? 
Okay, they're tiny little bits of plastic. They're not really flexible. They are uniform, more or less. So we're not gonna use too much, otherwise it's going to look like too much. And it's going to start going into the looking fake territory. Let's put these back, in. oh wow. Okay, we are not putting those back in. We are basically just seasoning our own disc. <laughs> it's fine, I'm okay. And I'm going to guess that the lettuce is basically the same thing. Let's get you opened up. Let's take out a few. And these are actually pretty cute. They're not uniform, they're quite squiggly, so they really do look like tiny lettuce. All right, so we're gonna take our tiny taco, like so, put it in the stand. This is such a perfect fit, look at that. If I haven't seen anything fit as perfectly, now I have. <laughs> Next, we take our beef taco, like so, and I'm going to guess we're just going to pull them out like this. Oh my goodness. And then we're gonna put it in the taco like this. Okay, they did give us quite a bit of meat. I'm wondering if, there you go, if we're going to need a lot or not really, but I really do want to bring it as close to the edge as possible because I do want us to see the meat or tofu or whatever you prefer. Oh my goodness, come here, come here. And we're gonna get you over here. Now let's check out our hot sauce. I'm surprised they didn't just make it a salsa, which would have worked either way because not everyone likes hot sauce. And let's see what we have here. Oh wow, that is a nice goopy red sauce. That is really opaque. And we're gonna get the nozzle right on there. Hopefully they gave us enough because recently they've been cheaping out on the amount of resin they're putting in there. And for a craft kit that focuses on resin type projects, you do not want to cheap out on this thing, especially how much these things cost. All right, so let's put you right on top like so. This looks great. So far, so good. This is looking really good so far. I'm gonna try and get a little bit more in the front, like this. It's pretty thick, so I like that. And if we look at the image here, they're really piling the lettuce and the cheese, which my worry again is that we will not be able to get a proper adhesion to the resin. So I think I'm gonna take some liberties and probably add some more hot sauce on top. And despite the fact that they say we only need to cure this once, we're gonna follow the instructions and see if that actually works. So we're gonna put some of the lettuce like this. So, I do want the lettuce to stick out over here. That's looking cute. Let's check the other side. Yeah, looking okay. Where did you fall from? I need you right here. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the cheese. Hey, okay, see, the cheese has nothing to hold on to. Like so. Yeah, that is that is not gonna hold on. Okay, you come here, tapa tapa. Let's check the other side. It's a little sad, but we're gonna fix that. And even though the instructions do say to put it in sunlight for 10 to, is it 10 to 15 minutes? Yeah, five to 10 minutes. We're not gonna do that. We do have a UV light, which is basically going to act like the UV rays from the sunlight and cure this within two minutes. And this is where we're going to add extra hot sauce right on top. So we're gonna take a little bit of that creative liberty. Oh my goodness. And just kind of go zigzaggy like a so. Oh my goodness, please, please. Please? I think so. I think this is it. All right, we're gonna save our progress and put our UV light right on top. And let's see what happens in two minutes. A few minutes later. All right, so it's been about three minutes and let's take a closer look at the taco. How's the resin on top? Yeah, nicely hardened. How's all the ingredients? They can move a little bit and the meat is definitely not going to stay in place. You should not be, hang on. Is the resin under it cured? Yes but the meat is still moving because there's nothing to hold it together. So this is one of those displays where you should not be moving it too much. But overall, this is a pretty cute project and it does fit in a dinosaur, which listen, I know is a gimmick, but it is a cute gimmick. And usually I like to hoard the rest of the ingredients for future projects, maybe even live streams. So let me know what you do with the extras when you have them. Let's see what else we got. And in here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh no, oh no, I really hope we're not getting another double over here because we have the same kind of mat. This does not feel familiar, so let's go ahead and open this one. Let's see what our first surprise is. And it is tacos. Okay, we are going into double territory already. Let's go on to the next one. What do we have here? We have one, two, three, 
to, oh gosh, please don't be the same thing. No, it is different. Okay, we have a different mat and it says Bon Appetit. So we have two, three, four, five, six surprises. Okay, good. We're definitely on the right side of no doubles at this time. We have our little stand so we can display our creation. And let's start off over here. We have our cute little <laughs> illustration. First surprise is, what are you? Strawberries. Okay, we have tiny strawberries. So we're definitely in the dessert territory. Number two, oh, a plate. Okay, so it's not a cake. Not sure what this is. What's going on here? Nothing. This is a bit chunky, so let's see what's over here. We have chocolate. Interesting, I actually have no idea what we're going to be putting together so far. Let's check out the non-nutritional facts. What does it say? Total happy, vitamin fun, and sun smiles. Sure, I am stumped. What are we making? What are you? Crepes! If, if we're speaking in French, we, we say c'est des crêpes. <laughs> so we're going to be making crepes. Cute, how flexible is this? That is not flexible. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, oh, you know what? I wanna open it now. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and open because I am curious how this is going to be. Oh my goodness. They come in protective sheets? What? Okay, they come in protective sheets. Look at that. It's like a really thin piece of silicone. Wow, that is stretchy. It actually feels like the real thing. No way. That's interesting. So we have a very thin silicone piece over here and clearly we can put it this way together to make the crepes. Oh, and we do have non-nutritional facts at the back here. It says, ooh la la, crepe cuteness and total joy. So since we got strawberries, I'm, I don't know if we're getting whipped cream. We have bananas. I love bananas. I genuinely love bananas. They are probably one of my favorite fruits out there in addition to oranges, but strawberry and bananas really do make the best combination. It's like creamy and tart at the same time. And last but not least, we should be getting the utensils. Oh, okay, we have a spreading knife and the tongs. So let's see what this is supposed to look like. Okay, so according to the ingredients we got, this is what it's supposed to look like, which is very, very yummy. And now all of a sudden I smell bananas. This is my mind playing tricks on me. I smell bananas. And the instructions show to spread the chocolate on the crepe. Oh, interesting. And then fold the crepe. What? Hang on, I am confused. So it says to spread the crepe and then put the tweezers on top so that it closes and then add a second layer on top and then the fruits, but they're not saying to put the fruits on the inside. So this is a little confusing. I think I'm going to not follow the instructions and do it the way I think it should be done. So since everything is white, we're gonna go ahead and bring in my trusty felt. Now we're looking blue and cute. Here's what the chocolate looks like on the inside. So it is pretty thick. Yeah, that is nice thickness right here. And we're going to start off by taking the crepe. Very cute. And I'm actually going to use the stand in order to prop it up. And we're gonna put the chocolate everywhere. There we go. Nice, spread it even, like a so. My biggest worry is that this is indeed made out of silicone. So I don't know if the resin will stick right on top, but I guess there's only one way to find out. Let's take some bananas. Let's take, I don't know how many, four. And some strawberries like a so. Let's take also four. And let's go ahead and put them on the outer edge like this and interchange them a little bit. We have strawberry, banana, and then banana, strawberry, and another banana. So it looks like we only need three in total. And then if we do this, like a saw and push it down. I think this is where they wanted us to keep the tweezers. Oh my goodness, that is not heavy enough. <laughs> that is definitely not heavy enough. I think I'm gonna have to keep my finger on there because the tweezer is not heavy at all. No, you see it's keep lifting. That is not working out here. That is not working out. Okay, the question is how do we get this to stay? Okay, I'm gonna keep my finger right here and I have no idea if someone didn't have a UV light how they would do this because technically you have to do it in sunlight but you also can't put something that is not transparent on top of it because then it won't cure. So I'm gonna keep my finger here and turn the light on and see what actually happens. If it actually goes through or hardens or doesn't harden, I don't know, I'm not sure. Let's see what happens in two minutes. 
A few minutes later. All right, so it's been over five minutes, and I have to say this project is kind of a disaster because the silicon is just not sticking to the resin, which is normal. Resin is not supposed to stick to silicon. That's why we use it as a mat to protect our surface. But yeah, this this is a disaster project. I mean, we can definitely put one on here and kind of just make one, but I feel like the execution on this is just terrible. We could probably put a good, nice goop right here and maybe get away with just doing some more decorations on top with more bananas and strawberries kind of like this. That is, I hate this. This is probably one of the worst ones. <laughs> if I had to do this, I'm gonna show you what way I would probably do it for the best success in this category, despite the fact that I think because the because it's silicon, it's not gonna work, but we're gonna try the other method I can think of. And here it is, I have to say this is kind of nasty. I don't like this, not one bit. But the method that I was thinking of doing it, as you can see here on the screen, is make a kind of cone shape with the crepe and making it so that the outer edge is at the bottom, shoving all that in extra cream on the inside and then curing that and then putting another layer of chocolate and then putting the fruits right on the outside. So it kind of looks like those Japanese crepes that they have in places like Harajuku, as you can see here on the screen. Those are absolutely phenomenal. Usually they have whipped cream or custard. But in this case, we're trying to do the best that we can with what we have. And so here it is all done. I really do love the tiny detail of the sticker on there. It kind of makes it look a little bit more cute, but here they are side by side. Let me know which one do you like best of the two. I still think they're both disasters, but I'm curious to know which disaster do you like best. Now the question is, can we get a burger? What do we have here? Let's see if we have a different kind of mat right away. We don't have a mat, so that means it's different. We have one, two, three, four, five, six surprises. Instruction guide and the list of items. You don't need no instructions. And of course, our cute little display. So let's start off with this chunky one and see what we have. What is that? Oh my goodness, we have ice cream. That's adorable. So we have the little taiyaki, which is fish shaped kind of pastry. And it says Ichi ni san, which in Japanese is one, two, three. But san is usually S-A-N, but they're playing on words here since their brand is the sun brand. Very cute. Let's open this up. I'm really curious what the material is for this fish. Okay, so it's a bit of a harder type of silicon, a little plastic, but not too soft. So it definitely keeps its shape. Very cute details. It kind of reminds me of Magikarp, just because of the mouth being opened. And I'm a huge fan of Magikarp, if you couldn't tell. Next we have, oh, okay. This is the display stand, interesting. So we get to put them vertical. That makes it so much easier to make. I love that. This one is chunky. What do we get? We get, Ice cream! And it actually has the non-nutritional facts in the back. Let's see what it says. Best bean richness and total cool. And it says happy cow approved, always fresh. Award-winning flavors. I like the way they were flavors. Oh, wow. It's like soft serve ice cream. We get two of them. This is making me want vanilla, fr vanilla bean, French vanilla bean ice cream. And then, we have, are these sprinkles? They are indeed sprinkles and they come in purple, pink, and a bit of a minty color. Very cute. And I love the way they make their sprinkle bottles because it's just a half moon opening. So it's not all gonna just rush out in one piece. And I'm guessing here should be the drizzle or something. This is our resin, cotton candy syrup. So we have a pink looking syrup. Is there, a nozzle, and the answer is no. Okay, that's gonna be tricky. Let's see what we have in the back. It says vitamin sweet, total joy, and I can't tell what the other one on top is. Not sure, it's really hard to see. And what does the cream look like? Oh my goodness, this is a really big, really big opening here. Not sure how we're gonna do this, but we're gonna have to figure out since we're not getting a smaller nozzle. And then over here, we are getting our utensils. So we just have tongs, tongs and the cap, that's it. 
And according to the ingredients over here, we are getting the Taiyaki Ice Cream. And the instructions basically say to put the ice cream inside and it should fit snugly enough. And then all we have to do is put the actual cream on top and then decorate. So there's nothing to hold the ice cream to the actual base other than maybe just force. So let's go ahead and try this out. I'm gonna take one of our ice cream bases over here and shove it in there. Okay, you know what? It's nice and snug, so it shouldn't come out. Shouldn't is the key word. And then we can put it right on top over here. And since I don't trust myself, we're gonna do one at a time. We're not going to try and balance everything. And we're gonna put my felt over here so we can have a better look. Now I'm not sure how, to, how they want me to do this other than just put it on top like this. This is a very simple project. So we're just gonna kind of let it fall on its own. I think so. I'm gonna put a little more and see how long it takes to fall. We don't wanna to put too much. Ah! Don't, do not slant, do not. Don't do it. Part of me kind of wants to help it down. We're just gonna take the, oh my goodness. We're just gonna take the tweezers, spread it a little bit like a saw. Very nice. And now let's take our sprinkles and just kind of let it go down. I know this is not the ideal way to do sprinkles according to Mariah Elizabeth. It's not. Great, but let's let's do it this way. And we're just gonna freeze our progress here. And since this project was really easy, I just went ahead and did the second one and they look absolutely adorable as they are done. I even had fun decorating the little stand by putting the sprinkles and the syrup and the box in the back. And despite the fact that it is really simple, I think here are all three that we did today, including the Taiyaki sprinkle ice cream dessert, the hazelnut chocolate strawberry banana crepes, and the beef taco dinosaur stand. Let me know in the comment section below which one of these three is your favorite. Again, I'm going to say the simplest one was actually my favorite one, which is the ice cream taiyaki. I'm normally not a dessert person and I really wanted the hamburger. So if you do want to see me make more of the series three, make sure to leave a thumbs up and share the video because that lets me know and YouTube that you do like this video and want to see more crafting. If you want to watch more, make sure you click up here. If you want to watch something a little different, just unboxings, make sure you click down here. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.